I decided to buy a new pillar drill. I needed something a little more rigid so I could drill holes in aluminium. I'm working on making some new CNC machine plates but the current version of my CNC machine is not rigid enough to make the smaller holes as quickly as I'd like. Because I have a limited amount of time that I can be here in the workshop, what I've decided to do is spot mark and cut the aluminium out on the CNC machine and later drill the holes using short stub drill bits the exact size that I need. The old bench drill in the workshop has been around for some time. I made some modifications to it back when I first started making YouTube videos and in fairness it's decent enough on wood and softer material, but I have noticed a little flexing in the table when drilling metal. The new drill weighs three to four times that of the old one and is a lot more rigid. Okay, so I bought a new pillar drill. I bought the smallest one, the ATDP13B, it's from Axminster. Uh, if you're not from the UK, they're like the, well I don't know how to explain it, they're like the sort of John Lewis of uh, tools. Um, they're pretty good, quick delivery, really good customer service. I'm going to shove it on here for now. Nice big cast iron. Hey, that looks like that fidget spinner John Hyde's made. Yeah, I'm just taking stuff out. You can tell them the box looks a bit bad. Just must be the chuck. Good. So that box looks entirely fucked. Got some serious amount of uh, lube on it. That's the handle. The paint doesn't crack, you haven't tightened it up hard enough. This is when all that lube on the components becomes a bit dangerous. After I assembled the machine following the instructions, I began giving it the once over. I checked the table with my engineer straight edge, which seemed to be flat enough, but there was a little light bleed on one side. The dressing on the surface looks quite coarse as well, which is a bit of a disappointment considering the tool is from the John Lewis of Tool Companies. What a weird uh, dink there and there. Definitely feels like they needed to sharpen whatever they were doing that with. But anyway. I'm now installing the chuck guard. This drill has an electronic micro switch which prevents the chuck turning if the guard is not in place. I could trick the mechanism to not include it, but for now I want to see how it operates as designed. So I'm guessing, if you look inside there, there's two screws and that's holding a bit of metal. It's probably very thin and flexible. And I think the switch has to line up with that. I started by attaching the rigid mounting bracket and later the micro switch within its housing then the aluminum extrusion and the plastic guard. I can't tell if the plastic is polycarbonate, it feels a bit yellow to be honest and more like acrylic. It doesn't give you much room for adjusting this, it's very tight between there, I think that's a really bad design. Really what they should have had was the uh, locking, depth locking uh, wheel that's on the handle there. You can see this actually turns, so I almost wonder whether something that you could actually make yourself. This entire section feels like the cheapest and most flimsy part of the pillar drill and almost doesn't feel worth having. But the most annoying thing is how it covers and blocks the depth adjustment. This is a really bad design and the sort of thing that will really annoy me over time. I then check for squareness using a dial gauge secured on an arm across from the chuck. I check the cast iron table itself by turning the chuck around and comparing the measurement readings. That's 0 0.6, 0 there. That's 0 there, so it's pretty good this way. 
just need a little bit of tweaking that way. Okay, I've just put a bit of wood here because I realised that actually the surface of the um, bed is just not ground that nicely. And it's even just rubbing my fingers against it, I can feel some really sort of harsh ridges. I later did the same with a scrap piece of MDF resting on top of the table. There was a noticeable improvement on the MDF, but it later occurred to me that I should have rotated the bar in the jaws of the chuck just in case I'd somehow compensated for the error between the chuck and the table. So it's about 0 0.09 off. I just swapped the positioning of how I had the, the depth gauge set up. Um, just so that I'm not using this weird contraption. I feel like this adds a little bit of error sometimes. 0.0, maybe 0 0.06, that's not bad. We can live with that. I also used the dial gauge to check the runout on the Morse taper on the main shaft of the drill. This is where you'd normally fit the chuck into. This was pretty good with a runout of only 0.02 millimeters, but when I fitted the chuck and checked the runout on a piece of precision round engineering steel, I got a reading of 0.3 millimeters. I mean, this is machine steel. Um, and clearly it's the chuck uh, or the Morse taper. Okay, I don't... I don't like the chuck, I'm not impressed with that. I would like to try and minimise this as I'm working to quite a high tolerance, but when I got in touch with Axminster they said, Allo Savas, the manufacturer's tolerance on the drill chuck is 0.4mm run out with a bar fitted on the chuck measurement 100mm away from the chuck, so yours will be within tolerance, and the manufacturer's tolerance for the table top levelness is 0.20mm. Sorry for that freaked you out a little bit, but that's the voice I hear when I read emails and comments, especially disappointing ones. This was quite a heavy thing to put together and I don't really want to dismantle it. And in any case, I've already thrown the box away. I may not have set the chuck on the Morse taper properly or that into the main shaft of the drill, but that said, there isn't much to go wrong there. Anyway, I think I can get around this if I buy a Morse taper to ER16 collet, which I can replace the chuck with. The runner on a CNC spindle is less than 0.01mm, and the collets are designed to self-center more accurately than those on a drill chuck. It is important that I try and minimize any error in the pillar drill before making the holes on my CNC plates. Anyway, after the excitement faded, I began to realize there was quite a bit of vibration in the drill. I could also feel it in the handle, which isn't a good sign. Okay, I just moved it from there, over here, onto that, which was over there, under that, now next to this. Actually, this this sounds really, really loud. And in the end, a combination of the poorly designed depth stop position, the vibration in the arm, and the noise from the pulley cover convinced me that I should return the machine. Had I bought this second hand, I would feel more comfortable to pull it apart and work out where the vibrations were coming from. But I don't feel like I should have to spend 400 quid to do this. I cut my losses, which were a non-refundable voucher for 20 quid, and sent this back. In the end, I bought two bench drills for less than half the price I paid for this drill alone. In reality, I'm never going to get the tolerance I want unless I move to engineering machines. And well, if you saw the wet rot versus workshop video, I don't think the studio floor could take a engineering machine. In the next video, I'm going to tear down and rebuild an old bench drill, which I bought on eBay. And as with all, Second-hand machine tools, there's always something that looks like bird shit on it. As usual, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to sacrifice a thumb. Let me know what you hated about the video in the description. And you'll catch me in the next one.